day one, already something exciting going on, just like I knew there would be around here. I mean, you know, I'm a pretty big helicopter buff, so I find this really pretty cool. I just gotta find out why he's here. Gotta find out. pretty good. I always love good helicopter action. <laughs> I'm a big helicopter buff. I don't really know a lot about the models and stuff like that, but um, yeah, man, I'm all about that. Uh, I've always liked uh, helicopters, not necessarily airplanes, like maybe older ones, war type ones I find pretty interesting. Um, but helicopters in particular I find interesting. I, I just don't know the models and stuff like that. Whatever. I like heavy equipment, machinery. <laughs> um, I love to watch bulldozers. I love fire trucks. Like I have personally like 75,000, 76,000 photos and over 35,000 videos in my collection. I've been doing this a long time. Um, I just, like I said, I've been derailed for about 10 years. Um, I'm now realizing how important, well, I mean, I, get, I, I say I'm now realizing how important it is to document things. Um, you know, I've documented as much as my life as I can or, or, or as I could. So like around the fifth grade, I got involved in photography in elementary school. And it's when we had a dark room. There were four of us in that class. Um, and I actually have some pictures with them that we took. And I still have them, which is great. They're in black and white. We developed them in the dark room. It was really cool. We got to go outside the school to take pictures. And I changed my life, you know. And my father was into photography, so that really helped. I never really learned, like, a lot of the technical aspects of it. All right, you know. <laughs> Um, I'm more into creative side. I've never really explored like all the software and stuff to, you know, manipulate the photos and, you know, make them more colorful and stuff like that. I've always been, I don't know if you call it a purist, but I like the idea of just doing photography and it replicating what I'm trying to show you in my eye. So I'm not gonna manipulate the photo because I'm trying to show you the actual beauty of it. I don't think things have to be particularly colorful to be beautiful. Um, they don't, you know, there's a lots of ways to, there are a lot of ways to express ideas in an honest way. Does that make sense? I don't know how to say it. Um, that, that's what happens in my head. It gets a little bit jumbled sometimes. And, uh, you know, I used to take medication for it, and I don't now. Um, so I have to kind of deal with those things as they come. Um, I have only recently admitted to myself and now to the world, I mean, I'm creative, and I don't necessarily think technically, which is fine. I get by. My husband's really good at the technical stuff. I'm good at the creative stuff. I'll probably do a lot of the recording, obviously, and uh, just being on camera and stuff. And he'll get to where he can put it all together in Adobe. I think we have like Adobe Pro Premiere, which a lot of people use. I like using CapCut also, and they just came out with a desktop version, so I'd like to use that too. Whew, wow, this is a lot for me. What you may or may not know, I mean, I have, okay, I have 11 social media channels. I have been chronically online since like 1992. Uh, when I met my husband, he ran a bulletin board system down in Houston. And people could call in with the modem and download photos or files that he had on that computer for their use, right? But he had to 
submit his phone number to a bank and then everybody would share phone numbers and then that's how you knew who was on the BBS, right? So of course the internet came along after that. Like I had AOL, I paid by the minute with AOL. That's how long I've been online. A lot of chat rooms. Oh, this is hard to hold up. A lot of chat rooms. Um, <clears throat> you know, news groups. Uh, I was on scuba news groups like back in 98, which was super cool. Um, there were a lot of guys called DIR down in Florida, do it right, I guess, or something like that. Um, I would consider them more technical divers and cave divers, and they just dove different BCDs. They dove wings and back plates, and we dove mostly buoyancy. I got into technical diving like 2006, and then I sold my scuba shop in 2007. Um, I always said I, YouTube came along, like 2007. If I had had YouTube from 1998 to 2006, I'd still be in scuba. I'd still have a shop. I'd be making videos. I've been traveling. I did travel. I just didn't record it. It was pretty hard to do, you know, when you're, like I flew to Italy and I got to dive in Italy. I have one picture underwater from Italy. The guy who took the picture for me, he didn't put anything in the background. I'm just in blue water. I could be anywhere. You never knew I was in Italy. So there's no video of that. There's no pictures of that. Because it just wasn't around and it was hard to do. I mean, we had underwater video camera and I've got a bunch of that video, a lot of it. From the flower gardens, we took a bunch. Um, a lot of pictures that I've never really put out there. I might have to take a break. Let me catch my breath. That's a lot for me. Um, I'm about, oh, I'm six months a post-op for major right leg reconstructive surgery. They cut my femur off about mid-thigh and then they removed my knee joint and they replaced it with a metal one. So it's kind of like an internal amputation. And I've been going through that, so I get a little winded. I'm going uphill right now and it's 100 degrees because <laughs> I decided to record this at like five o'clock in the afternoon, right? Um, that's kind of when I wake up, I guess. Whew. I'm pretty good. I recovered pretty well with that. That's, that's good. I wanted to kind of do a one shot thing. It kind of brings me back to the, for lack of a better word, authenticity. Um, a lot of people use that. I think in 2023, that was actually the most used word on the internet was authenticity. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you though is by telling you my background, and then I have been online since like 1992. Um, I built my own website. Back in 1998, I started my company called welchtravel.com. It was actually the name of it. It was my DBA. And at that time, nobody was a .com. And I would go to these travel agent seminars and everybody at the table was like a brick and mortar store, we called it. And they just looked at me like I was completely terrible travel agent, illegitimate, blah, blah, blah. I remember one lady said, well, when you need someone to print airline tickets, she says, you can come to me, a legitimate travel agent. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. And I had already been here, Expedia.com, all that kind of stuff, right? That was coming. Um, I was just hoping that I could figure out the software so that people could book online. That didn't happen. We ended up getting into scuba diving. Um, you know, we built a pool in our backyard. We started working with uh, students at home for like two years and then we started our scuba shop. And I'd already been into travel by that point when we went brick and mortar on the scuba shop. And then, I, so it was really easy to add in the travel. I called it the triple threat. I wanted to sell the instruction, teach them how to scuba dive. I wanted to sell them the gear that they would dive with. And then I wanted to book the trip that they were gonna travel on. And that was the key. Now, in order to keep scuba divers in your shop for five years minimum, you gotta introduce them to something. So 
some shops will go like heavy on education, right? And they'll bring you through to dive master and then you can work in the industry. Or they may have a course director on staff like with Patty and they'll bring you all the way through instructor. Or you can go to the technical route where they get into cave diving, more technical diving. They use different um, type like oxygen, um, nitrogen, uh, nitrox, uh, that sort of thing, right? And they go to deeper depths and they stay longer. They might go back into caves. It's a big deal, right? Um, or you can get them into like photography, conservation, uh, travel a lot, which is kind of my specialty and that's why I took up photography um, because it really helped keep people around and we had a really successful shop. And then um, my husband got promoted at work. I mean, like they sold, like he had been with that company like 20 something years, right? And then the owner of that company sold it and so my husband had to go do that and then the other person that I had helping me got really sick um, and he had to have a you know some treatment right so I was done and I was exhausted and uh, lots of things were going on at home and I kind of wanted to just be there for my family my mom got sick in 2007 with Parkinson's she passed 10 years later it was really hard um, you know it was rough but yeah, I mean, like I did everything I could. Um, and I was doing like half a million dollars a year. I was doing like $550,000 a year. I had 18 staff members. We taught over 400 students. I mean, it was big. <laughs> and I just kind of sold it and walked away from it. And then I did motorcycles for like a couple of years. You know, raise my family, do that sort of thing. I uh, was going up back and forth to New York City all the time with my mom because she was sick. Um, you know, it, it, and life just started happening. Um, and scuba just kind of got pushed to the back. And travel too. When I sold the scuba shop, I sold the travel shop or the travel agency. Um, you know, had I had all that and had social media, I'd still be doing it. Easy. I love watching the, the girl that has the long braids that scuba dives like in the Red Sea. I think that's amazing. I wish I could have done that. Um, so what I'm going to do now though is not miss my opportunity for a big story that I have that I feel like is um, something I want to cover and it's something I have intimate knowledge about. Um, and we're going to travel out west. Um, there, there is a story out there and I want to tell it. Um, I also am a huge NBA fan and we love the Dallas Mavericks. We've been fans for like 20 years. We're season ticket holders for 17. And I would like to go to some other arenas and watch the Mavs play this year because, you know, now we got Thompson. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but pretty excited about the new here. But that, that's me. That's who I am. We took a walk. I'm a little out of breath, but I'm doing really good for the operation I had. This is actually pretty amazing. Um, but that, that's who I am, and I'm going to keep on making videos, and I hope you join me. <laughs> Have a great day. I'm having a good day today.